This is a test of the Bounty Park Alert System. Thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to the Latins Football phone Hello. Just got to say that I did set this event for 8.30am, so I might have thrown some of you. I uh, couldn't change it on Facebook. So um, we are live um, at 8.30pm, as so usual. I'll put the link in the comments. It's oh, in the comments. Oh, it's already done. Oh. Yeah. Evening, Eddie. Eddie Cortine. Hmm. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you've all been texting, oh, God, do we know if the phone is on tonight? Guys, in your group text, you can put it in the group text. Yeah, it's on. We're here. We are here and we are live. All 31 of you are watching us. Yeah, well, you know, a lot most people watch it afterwards, Dev, because they're doing something else on a Wednesday night, something more important. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, oh, a few, got, people are, few people have, um, are, are in the queue, which yeah. is good. So we've just been recording our Look at Latic show we have. for Saturday because we can't do it live from the uh, from the ground, but that'll be before South End game. Uh, we've just had the Kidderminster game yep. and we've just had the East, Eastley game. Yes. Down and in the dumps on Saturday, weren't we? Yeah. Completely two ends of the scale, weren't mm. it? Um, Kidderminster was woeful, shocking, bad. Rubbish, crap, turgid, yeah. uh, and Eastley was not but, not so bad if I say so myself. Oh, here's an interesting question from Dave Hall. Hi, Dave. At the end of season two, will there be a tackle of the season award? Well, you... votes are in for Raglan. <laughs> I think that that was the refereeing decision of the. Uh, it really the was. If you were still doing the ref review, Dave. Uh, play on, son. Play on. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beauty, wasn't it? It was fantastic. Yeah, um, a Charlie Chopper, a Raglan. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's it's a yellow. It's a yellow. He's got a man covering him behind him. Mm. He's all right. And then I'm like, what's what's going on? He's not giving <laughs> him a free kick. Yeah. Absolutely so, yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, we've got uh, Danny Fairbrother on night. So, should we get him in first? Let's get him in. Oh, hi, Danny. Hi, right, chaps. Long time since I've been on. Yeah, it's a while, mate. Yeah. So, Not a long time since I've seen you. I saw you on Saturday. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> and at Maidenhead. And at Maidenhead. That's right. So, oh. what? another mad few days in the world of Latics. What's your take on it? I don't, I don't get our own form at all. Um, away from home, we murder anyone. I think we last lost October. I think it was against Fylde, 3-0. But our own form is just stupid like we we struggled against Mickelover Hendon yeah the bottom six teams I think we've only got one point against at home Ebsfleet Woking all them lot I just I don't get them I do not get them um, we beat night, Oxford City played, didn't we we beat Oxford City 3-4 yeah 4-0 yeah, four four nil, four nil. Nil. That, yeah so yeah. that's probably the yeah, only so, yeah but other than that it, we've just been terrible I don't, I don't get them at all Last night, we played f good football on the floor. At home, we play long ball, which is... I, I don't want to be watching that. If I want to watch long ball, I'll go and watch our Reese. Um, but they've shown last night they can get it on the deck and play. Yeah, I, I think, you know, Saturday you got it completely wrong. That, like, Lundstrom's position, what he started in the first half, it was like a right wing, wing back, weren't it? Um mm. He's, Green's been probably the most impact player since uh, uh, Boreham Wood when he came on and set up a goal, scored. Then he was sub against York again. And then he was sub against... Um, Maidenhead. Ma Maidenhead. No, he started against Maidenhead. Did he? And then he subbed him against York and then he subbed him against... Who was it at home? Uh, Kidderminster. He came on as a sub. And then he started him. So it just goes to show that he's been playing well. He really yeah. needs to um, start, be starting green. And Walker, thankfully, is now back. Hammond has been outstanding. He got subbed against yeah, Kidderminster yeah. unfairly because I thought he was our best player. He was the only one who looked yeah. lively in that first half. 
I uh, thought I thought we started to struggle a bit more when he came off against Eastley on last night. To be honest mm. with you, and Gardner came on instead because Eastley did pick up a bit in the last sort of ten minutes of the game. Um, but Hammond's energy, him and Sharon last night were all over the place, and it was down to. Magai's positioning, he stayed pretty much in the centre circle and if he was out of the centre circle, he was pretty much just down the spine of the pitch mm. most of the time. He stayed down the middle and everybody else sort of played off him and I'm trying to figure out as I'm watching the game, like, what's the difference? Like, why? But what... Eastley, I think, played like Maidenhead did, Danny. They, they, they sat off us and they give us too much respect and let us play too much. Whereas, like, when teams come to Boundary Park, it seems that they're, they're intent on not letting us do that and they're putting us under a lot more pressure like Kidderminster did. And so then we're struggling. Like, when we played mm. Dorking, Dorking put us under a lot of pressure and we struggled. So I think some managers seem to have figured out that if, we, if they press us a lot and they get on us, then we'll start panicking and giving the ball away. But uh, I, th I think some teams are playing into our hands and some teams have got us sussed out. And the big problem is, is that we've got to start sussing out how to beat these teams that get on us and get in our face. And that's because that's where we're struggling, I think. Yeah, definitely. But I've been meaning to ask you, Matt, after the podcast on um, Monday morning, you said you don't think um, we'll go, you think we'll get in the playoffs and that. But if we, I think if we play last like we did last night for the rest of the season, I think we'll be all right, me. I, I, I genuinely I know, think but I mean, it's a false dawn, Danny, because it's it keeps happening, doesn't it? And then like you know, we covered. I think I think Danny. Honestly, I thought that after just uh, Kidderminster that we're not got. We're not going to be up to the big occasion, but let's look. Let, yeah. I mean, we've got so many big occasions now. Look at Southend yeah. and Bromley; these next two home games. Again, yeah. if they, if they turn it around in those two games, then all of a sudden at home games, then you start to think, you know, maybe well, they if, do if, if we turn it if we turn it around in those two games, we've caught second place as well. Mm. It's it's crazy to think the points we've thrown away, the draws we've had, and the points we've thrown away at home, losing. We we could have been with Chesterfield at the top. Minus the ten games that Unsworth is in charge as well, we'd would have been would have been in good stead for this league. The weird um, thing is, Danny, is that I fancy us more at home against Southend and Bromley than I have done against Boreham Wood. Um, yeah. You know, walking and these other teams down there because it just seems like we, we we struggle. You know, we've beat Barnet at home, haven't we? We've you know we've yeah you know, put in a decent performance against them. So it's that unpredictability I just want to see more than anything a settled team yeah. I want to see us have a like, like the other night last night against Eastleigh to me it looked like it worked and I want to see the same way of playing and the same approach to the game um, on Saturday because don't be making changes now don't be swapping players that played well in one position and putting them in another position it just it drives me mad yeah definitely do you, do, you, do you know anything about um, Norwood coming back yet? Because Mickey Mellon said in his interview after the game, he said he'll be on the bench hopefully for Saturday. Right, because that'd be nice that, to, to get him back just before, like if we do get him a playoffs, get him firing again because he's had a nice rest now, hasn't he? Six weeks or something. So getting back in and uh, get firing again, I think. I'm not I'm not really keen on that Dallas. I've not seen much of him. He's, he's like... Um, I know he's been a substitute and that, and then he had an injury. But um, he's not—he's not really had a chance to get a grip on the game yet, has he? But that Garner, he's made more of an impact than Dallas has, and we've had him a lot less time. And he's, he's been a brilliant signing, Danny. And he? he's been like last yeah. night. I thought he was really good, not just in the in the goals, which I thought were both really, really good goals. Like. But just his play, he was just a nuisance. Like he's he 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 keeps going down. He's a he's proper shit house, isn't he? He's always yeah, going yeah, down, yeah. looking for free kicks and stuff. And then he wins some. He doesn't win some. He gets back up again. You know, it's like oh my leg. Oh no, I'm fine. And like yeah, yeah. we've not had anyone like that. And oh. it's not something I particularly enjoy in the game. But um, he reminds he, me he, a bit of like Luke Beckett in a way. He's like yeah, a, yeah, good comparison that. You know, he gets stuck in, gets the headers, draws the foul, and then if he gets yeah. a chance in the box, he'll finish it. What he is going to do with his headers is he's obviously he can't out jump some of these big guys, but what he'll do is he'll 
he'll he'll get in he'll get in um early and and flick it back like that like he reads it if the ball's dropping a bit lower he gets forward and he flicks it back he wins a lot of headers for someone who's not as as anywhere near as big as some of these center halves right. but i think it's been a brilliant signing because straight away now we've got like like you said when norwood comes back if he's if he's firing on all cylinders we've got three strikers that are in goal scoring form and that's mm -hmm. i mean that's gold in it at this time of season do you think we'll see Reed again? No. Nah. Unfortunately, I, I think Mellon's done with him, but I think it's really unfair if he's brought McGay back. I think yeah. He's unfair. Well, we, I do we like Reed. He's a bit, he's a bit lightweight and that, but he's got the speed and uh, he's got something he different. Defenders on, doesn't he? He's got something different, you know, mm. and he just needs to run. Into, but I, 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 free Reed, free Reed. Yeah, yeah. Who was it? Callum Lang won it. Was it free Callum Lang last time or something? Who was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was him, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, guys, I'll uh, I'll leave you leave you both to it. Let someone else call up. Yeah, we've got a few waiting, mate. So thanks for the call, pal. Yeah. No worries, See you, boys. You're there at the weekend, mate. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All yeah. Right, yeah. Not time, drinking man. this weekend, though. I had too many last weekend. It was, <laughs> I don't believe it was a heavy you. one. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna drive to the game. All right. So, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm doing parched March. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, mean, I might I'm, kick I'm, on I'm, that with I'm, you. I'm, I've got a busy month, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take mm. it easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just invented parched March. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. Guys, take care, See you, later. See you in a bit. All right, boys. See, See you later. You. Bye. Uh, can we just parched uh, March, let... Matt Dean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got loads. I've got seven gigs on in March. Oh, so it's a lot like SEDC. Yeah, it's like a world tour of uh, Ryan <laughs> and Bailsworth and Warrington, Chatterton, Burnley, Chatterton, Yeah, Chatterton. No, it's, it's all go. Um, anyway, all I was gonna say was, yeah, so fair play to everybody who went down last night to Eastleigh, especially if you travel from Oldham. It's a long, long way. I thought the fans were brilliant last night, they made a right racket. It sounded to me like if they weren't in there. There would have been absolutely no atmosphere whatsoever. They sang all the way through the game. I thought it was fantastic. So big, massive uh, shout out to all them. I suspect this young man was there. Let's find out. Ben Man, were you there last night, mate? Hi, I'm Ad. You all right? Hi. Are you? Yeah, yeah, great, great. JGL with a pal. Late yeah, night. Uh, yeah, very long day as well. Yeah. But what's it when you? What time did you leave? One. Back to half three. Right. Yeah, it's a bit of a slog, isn't it? At least we won, though, eh? Hey? Uh, well, it's better when you win, isn't it, lads? You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you saw well, you saw the photos, you all st sticking into the cake there. Yeah, the no, post. I didn't. I'm on a diet. All oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so tell us, mate, what, tell us about your day, your trip and the game and all that. Yeah, the trip was all right, obviously. You know, I've, I don't go with it. Obviously, you know myself, myself Matt. I run my own, but unfortunately, I couldn't do it. But uh, yeah, the game, uh, yeah, I thought it was, uh, again, saying I was just set up every away game. I thought we absolutely controlled the game. I thought, <laughs> you know, we should have been two or three nil up in the first half. And um, yeah, I just want to say about Danny, what he just mentioned them. I can't get me singing. Why it was so bad at home? Why? Why? Tell me, Matt. Tell me, Dave. <laughs> Someone, please come up with something the key. The only thing and, I can think of is like is what I said before about about teams coming to Boundary Park and just and and playing on the front foot. But I think I think we allow them to though by not by not taking the initiative and and, and stepping up and and putting them under pressure. I just it seems like Mickey Mellon has not quite figured out how and who he wants to play like week in week out, and I think. For me, you've got to find a system and then you've got to try and drop players into those systems. So like Conlon could play where Maguire played yesterday, for example. You know, you've got to have like Lundstrom and Sharon in those two kind of pressing and harassing positions. You could potentially put drop Lundstrom into one of those positions if no. you yeah. no, if you needed to. <laughs> if you know, if like if the player's not and then playing with the two wide players. And let's stick with this formation now, you know, you've got the three center house, we've got Hob Hobson, Raglan, Hogan, and Sutton. So one of three of those four, and then you've got the two up top. I, I think we, we seem to have a way of playing. I think 
the the away games when we've played like that and we've actually played it on the deck. See what we did last night, Bin Man. You'll you'll notice like we were playing long balls up top, but we were getting on the end. We were getting the second balls and then up further up the pitch, and then we were playing some good football in Stop the far third and creating chances rather than just kind of lumping it, losing it. And then dropping back. Well, Hammond, Hammond kept all of the ball and played like neat tri- one, two triangles and just tried to move up the pitch. Him, Hogan and Kitchen just made the moves all the way up that yeah. left-hand side. They couldn't contain us on the left-hand side. And then Green, to be fair, McGay, McGay, Green, Shearing and McGay sort of did the other on the other side. But, you know, obviously Shearing's a bit dodgy with his passing, but credit to him for the for the first goal. He he just di- he just dived in and just set the goal up, really. I thought he was really good. Last <laughs> he had those, he those he two, two shots. shots. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. good. I think he's a better player when he's when he's going forward, yeah. when he's when he's you know putting teams under pressure. We didn't miss Copland, did we? No, absolutely not. When I see Miguel you lined up uh, to start, I thought, oh my God. But to be fair, third player to him and the special mention to Garner. Absolutely, it's a guy, guy of his size. He wins everything in the air. He's yeah. an absolute animal, and is he? He's a graph. Do you know? He reminds me of Paul Warren. Hmm. Someone else has said that in the uh, yeah. in the comments here. Yeah, like yeah, he's an yeah, absolute. He he's a workhorse. He's a graph yeah. to him. He wins everything. He, he contributes to goals. He scores goals. He's he's something that was needed. Yeah. he really is. He's a proper pest. He'll do the dirty work, won't he? I noticed yeah. at the end. I noticed at the end of the game, like right in the late eighty somethingth minute, just getting stuck in up the pitch, putting yeah. tackles in. Like he just did not stop working. Uh, and you know what? As well, like it's. I think it's always really special for a striker, especially when they when they sign for a new club and they start scoring goals early because they start to enjoy themselves at the club early. And 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 it looks like when those goals have gone in, the way he's celebrating that he was absolutely buzzing. And it and it, it it it's coming in just at the right time. Like if Norwood can can come back on whenever he plays, whether it's Saturday, Tuesday, or whatever, get a goal early again, settle himself back down. It could be great, couldn't it? Those three forwards all, so, all firing. Fondot looked flat out though, didn't he? He looked flat on his yeah. feet. To if, us. We could get, if we could get uh, Norwood in for Saturday, get him in, pay him up front the down, and give Fondot a bit of rest. I don't sorry, know, I think start, Norwood. I think start start Fondot and bring Norwood on. I think. Yeah. If, if he's fully fit, yeah, I understand if he's not fully fit. If he is fully fit, there's no one to first name yeah. on the sheet. Yeah, of course he is, yeah. Yeah, he is, he yeah is. and then it's one or two of the others, because we haven't seen Garner and... Have we seen Garner and Norwood play? Yeah, they did, didn't they, the first game? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, that was, you know, that was... He's come into his own a lot more since then, Garner, and so... But I, th- I think it's, again, it's all comes down to this midfield, again, this, this midfield three. And I just... Miguel, Miguel made it look easy last night because I don't think he was put under the sort of pressure that some of the midfielders, other teams' midfields, put us under. But his discipline was just really, really good. And I think we, that's why we looked a lot better last night, I thought, because compared to what we were like at home, we just had far more discipline and shape and kept it. Um, and we were just more difficult to break to, to to compete against. It was just it was just so much better. The, the real frustration, of course, is what's going to happen Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah, I I think I think I think set up the same. Don't change it. Set up exactly the same. Obviously, I know you said bring Norwood on, but you know I would, but I would go exactly the same on Saturday. We absolutely battered them at the first half. Battered them. Mm. It was brilliant to watch, and I thought, like you said, then and the midfield—it's just—it's not been good all season, has it? It's not. We've brought in additions, and some of it's still not working. It didn't work on Saturday. Some had to change. You couldn't go in with the same team on Saturday. It was, but it helped with them getting a man sent off as well. We had—it was so open last night. That's why I thought we should have brought. We brought him from Walker. On what minute was it? Can't remember for the life of me what it was. But I thought we should have brought him on a bit earlier because we brought. Their, de- their, their defence was absolutely knackered. Thought did, 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 Walker come on? did Walker did, come on? I can't believe it. I'm pretty no, sure he didn't. Did. No, did he did. not? No, Gar- no, no, Gar- no, he didn't. Gar- right. Dallas. Yeah. I'm scared of Dallas because Dallas, Dallas has got pace, yeah, but Dallas is right. really fit. And I think that Dallas, everyone's saying, like, oh, he's not done much. He's only had 10 minutes here, 10 yeah. minutes there. Yeah. Coming on in games where you're at, where I the game's like 2 0 up or 1 0 one down, we've got no, you know, the bands are all on your back. He, he either needs to start a game and get get going, but he needs to be fully fit. I think he he's, yeah. he's going to be a different dimension, you know, potentially against an Halifax yeah. who's got a slow defence. I think he'd run rings around him if he got got his chance, you know, a bit oh. of pain. But, oh, but again, we, 
we, we have to play the game that, again that suits, don't we? Not this hit and hope um, tactic. It's, it, you know, because Kidderminster was just rinse and repeat, get it forward, get it forward, get it. It was just so dull. It wasn't working. Whereas last night, it was like we were mixing it up and it looked like we'd actually been doing a bit on the training ground. And like it, it, the, the frustration in Kidderminster was it didn't look like. A, a team that had been coached, it just looked like a team that just had no idea. Whereas last night, it looked like a team that had been instructed by the manager and was were, were putting it together on the pitch. Chalk and cheese, it's mental. Absolutely. Do you know what, as, as well, lads, I spoke to a mate of mine tonight, uh, Kevin, what I was saying to him, and he, he, sa- he says it every week and he's absolutely right, you'll know in 10 minutes whether we're going to win that game of football. Mm. And you, yeah. it, it's out on Saturday, it's all on Saturday. We could see in 10 minutes, we're not going to win this. And last night, 10 minutes in, I thought, we're going to win this. And it's, you know, you can just tell, can't you, how we, we are going to play and how we're going to see out the rest of the game. We need to yeah. change that. Yeah, mate. Yeah, well. well cheers, been man. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Uh, no you uh, get an early night tonight, won't you, after last night's efforts? Absolutely, mate. I'll go to bed before this show finishes. Of course you won't. I'll go about nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, good man. <laughs> no. Nice one, mate. Yeah, see catch you up with you, mate. Yeah. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye, Bye. mate. Right, let's uh, we we let's bring in someone who took uh, some Pompey fans to the game last night, I believe. Very nice, Andy. Oh, hi there. How you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, it's good last night, wasn't it? Yeah, you well, you were there, weren't you? Tell yeah, us. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, good go. So I just want to um, reiterate what you said. The fans were superb last night. Really yeah. good. I mean, I, I was at the Maidenhead game as well. There was more of us at Maidenhead, but but I mean, did they make some noise last night? It was really good. Yeah, and um, I know my friends were really impressed by it. They were joining in and stamping their feet and getting a bit carried away, to be honest with you. Brilliant. Um, so that was yeah, pretty good. They want to go to another game as soon as they can, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go for quite a while now. I think um, it's going to be Oxford the next away game I can get to. Um, I would have gone to all the shops just up the road, but I'm I'm occupied that weekend, so a bit sad about that. But never mind. I just wanted to say a couple of things about the game last night. I thought. Yeah, the team was really good. Um, probably the best of the ones I've seen so far. Certainly for the first, what shall we say, apart from the last 15 minutes, I guess. Um, and then it was it was getting a bit nervous at the end, wasn't it? Although we said, you know, we all think they really deserved to win. They were, they were on the front foot for most of the game. And there was large periods where, where Eastley were just pegged back and they just didn't know how to get out. It was really, really good. Um, Hammond... Yeah, there's a couple of things about Hammond. Really good on the ball, but his work rate off the ball it was what was giving McGahey the time to make the passes. Yeah. So he was dragging players all over the place and it was opening up space, especially on the right, it was, uh, on the left right of the kitchen. He took those, you know, he was moving players about all over the place and they didn't know where they were going and they were knackered by them because they were just chasing shadows. Um, yeah. Well, there was a did, lot of energy with him and Sharon yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and the big the big difference with the with the long balls this time was was we were hitting it to players who were in space. We weren't hitting it up just straight down the middle to the forwards where there were two defenders around them. They were, the long balls were generally going to people accurately and in space. And it made yeah, a not- huge difference. We played out from the back a lot more as well, didn't we, last night, rather yeah. than Hudson just hitting it yeah, yeah, we did, and yeah. up. So we yeah. played out from the back. We looked like the distribution of the ball was, you know, it kept, um, it simple, kept it easy. What do you, um, you make of Organ's header at the end there? Do you think he was fully in control and clearly heading it away? Or was he... Was he... Ooh, it was a it was a risky one, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it oh, was a risky one. Oh, that nearly, that nearly. Yeah. That long ago. I think he knew what yeah. he was doing. I think he knew what I he was doing. I, I, it's, it's really difficult to tell, isn't it? Where it all depends on your perspective and where you are in the ground, what you can see. Because from yeah. where we were, at the other end, you're thinking, "My God, that was close." But yeah. it could well be, you know, exactly what he was doing. I didn't see the Eastley fans sort of, you know, head in hands thinking it was going to go in. I think they knew he'd put it in. He, he was. In what he was doing. It was a danger area, and I thought it was a good defensive yeah. header. It looked, it made it look a lot worse than it did. Like even on the first at first glance when I watched it on TV, I was like bloody hell! But then it actually saw him before he was going to edit away. He's actually turning his head to get it away from the goal. It, it was, I think, it was a really good defensive header. And again, I think he's been brilliant these last few games. I thought he was the best, one of the best players against Kidderminster as well. 
Like, yeah. you know, putting him up front was a bit of a, you know, non-starter, but he, he, just... he, he's, he's definitely, you know, he's starting to step up to the plate in my eyes. I'm a little bit concerned about that last 15 minutes, though, because I think against a better side, we could have come unstuck there because he just seemed to go into, we were in so much control and then um, they got a very good goal, but there seemed to just be a slight amount of panic at the end. I think it, I, I think honestly I think one that sometimes like you can understand why Mellon wanted to make substitutions but I think the substitutions were what caused it I think we were in complete control Fondop coming off probably you know a bit knackered it was Hammond coming off for me that was the like you said what he was doing all the game you know he's 20 year old he should be fit as a fiddle so there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to keep all that energy up when Gardner came on he, he, I was watching him he wasn't doing anywhere near the amount of work that Hammond was doing and I think that's what allowed them back into the game unfortunately so yeah I, I mean you, you're waiting for it aren't you you're thinking oh god because I keep thinking back to when we go down to, when the opposition go down to 10 men that Altrincham game when we um, when we were two up and we <laughs> at home and we joined two all, ended yeah. up drawing two all so you never you never save and like you said that header that could have just been I, I just want to say something about their goal as well because I thought that it was a great strike but if you watch the defenders he got, I can't remember which defender it was, he got turned really easily. And then as as the um, easily player turned into the space, there was just like a horseshoe of three Latics defenders and yeah. another one next to it. Five Latics defenders and none of them got near him. None of them just closed down the space and I thought that was a bit disappointing. But S- Similar similar to the goal against Kidderminster, wasn't it? Where they just, he just went straight through. Yeah, yeah, just sort of like... Straight through the middle and nobody, nobody went to him at all. Yeah. Just that, mm-hmm. those little things like that, and those three set piece goals that we conceded in three games. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, against against better opposition, we're, we're going to struggle if we if we yeah. keep giving away. Things. You know, we've got things like Ch- uh, Chesterfield coming up and and and, and Bromley out right on a great run, are they? But you know, we, last night we just needed that third goal because their heads were starting to go down, and the, to me, the, the, it was a good goal, and it just lifted them. And um, I think if they'd have been three down, that wouldn't have, they wouldn't have even conceded that goal because their heads were starting to go. Um, but they yeah, just got we, we, we need we need to give someone a hiding at Boundary Park again. That's yeah. what we need. Ideally, South End on uh, Saturday or Brom, uh, Bromley. Yeah. We're due up giving Bromley a good hiding, aren't we? After they've given those two spankings down at their place, I'd, I'd absolutely love them to to wallop South End, but looking at South End's defensive record, they've, they've conceded the least number of goals. Mm. I believe they've only conceded 30, 36, I think, something like that. Less than Chesterfield, less than a lot, well, that's said, fewest in the league. So they've obviously got some sort of defence and um, Cardwell's knocking goals in quite quite on a quite regular basis. So I think it's going to be a tough game. And yeah. It all it'll all depend on what start we make. If we start like we did against Eastley and they allow us to start like that because um, you can only start like that if the opposition let you do it. But if we do that, then then I think we could, we could come away with the points. But... Yeah, well, we need to turn the corner at home, don't we? So let's yeah. let's keep our fingers crossed. Right, we've got a few more callers lined up, so we'll move on, Andy. But yeah, it was good to meet you at Maiden, Ed, and thanks for calling in. Yeah. Cheers, and bye. Cheers, All the best, mate. mate. Thanks. Bye. Right, we've got Alan waiting patiently in the background here. Hello, Alan. Hi, good evening, chaps. How are you doing? Very well. How Thanks are you? Thanks for calling yeah, in, mate. Yeah, um, oh, sorry, I saw you. I saw you, Dave, stood outside the uh, thing on Saturday. You're filling <laughs> old mates. I'm having your uh, vape or whatever it was you were having. Uh, I've got plenty of mates, thank you. Uh, but yeah, um, and you're not one of them. Uh, no, but no, no. I'm joking. <laughs> no, I was just uh, waiting for Brian Cox, who never showed up uh, for his alleged. Yeah, so he didn't show up till very late, and then I couldn't get an interview with him because I was already in the ground. But never mind, I will get him. No. Did you pass him? Right, a bit controversial. Here. The one thing I find mm. about the home and away, I was there last Saturday and I watched last night. The, the, the one difference between the two is the fans, the home fans and the away fans. Now, now I, when I normally go with the missus, we normally go in the uh, hospitality. And you get to, you know, you get to the two, a ref that was offside, whatever, this, that, and the other. But it was pure vile down by the actual touchline. Right. The actual, some, some, of the, yeah. some of the guys down there were giving it, it was, it was, it was verbal abuse. 
Now, yeah. I wouldn't put up with that at work. You wouldn't put up with that at work. So why should the football players have to put up with it? The linesmen, they were being so personal about the guy, it's unreal. Now, if, if we'd have had a 50-50 on a goal, he's going to say, sod you, lock behind yeah. me. It was, yeah. it was offside. Yeah. So we're not doing ourselves any favours. So that was in the north stand, was it? No, that was in the that we actually ended up in Joe Royal stand, but right down by the front in, uh, in the Joe Royal, section, yeah, cause... section B. Right. Yeah. Look, I mean, it, it, it's it's as old as football, and it uh, people giving people abuse and stuff. And I've always I've always said it that like you know you can abuse another team, you can abuse other fans. In the, there's a there's a limit, there's a level, isn't there? Of like I think what's acceptable, what's not. You got a bit of giving each other a bit of stick and all that. But I think when you start targeting individuals and making it really personal, it, you know, especially if they're on your own team, like it's just. Yeah, well, there, there, there was one particular young lad. He must have been in his twenties. He was on a right go at kitchen all night. He, he, kitchen, I call him then. Yeah, um, yeah. He was having a right go, go at kitchen all night. I'd say basically, you are effing useless. Get off the pitch. You're stealing away, and it's just not needed. I wouldn't want to go to work in that kind of atmosphere. Did anyone in the stand challenge the behaviour? No, no, because there was grown men doing it as well. It's, 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 I will never take my missus into the cheap seats again. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The own, the own fans, uh, some of them need to really take a good hard look at themselves. Look at themselves because we get home, yeah. get home tie in the playoffs. I, we've got no chance with that crowd because it's no. a yeah. morning old, stupid. Well, it's obviously, it, it, I mean, you know, the age range varies, doesn't it? And yeah, people see, young, people yeah. learn it from people learn it from other people. Yeah. And this is why I asked if it was if it was challenged because people, if people don't get challenged on it by other people, then they think it's acceptable. And people don't want to argue with amongst their own fan base and all that kind of stuff. But like, like you said, somebody who is part of your team, part of your club, part of your uh, the football football group, you're all supposed to be on the same page you know you're there yeah. to support them you're not there to abuse them you're not there to to give them personal insults and all that kind of stuff and personally i think that, that i'd love to see people challenging that kind of behavior and um you know ex asking people to explain why they're doing it and you know turn it on to them as well because like if, it, if it's okay for them to speak to players like that this is why when i've called people out i've had to, i've taken some grief in the past for calling some of our fans dickheads and wankers but if people in the stand are behaving like that towards our player then you, you're being a dickhead and and i think that's justified do you know what i mean to call or them a wanker or a wanker whatever yeah. i don't care but that for me it's not acceptable like you said, it's 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 not conducive what, to success, and it's just it's just what, moronic. What did I say about Ollie Hammond when he played the first twenty minutes? Oh, he's crap. He's rubbish. Get rid of him. He can't take a corner. He can't. He can't trap trap a ball. He can't press. He can't track back. Look at him now. Last two games, three four games, he's been our yeah. best performer because we've got idiots in the crowd, old, old, young or indifferent, who just. I think that we should be seeing Real Madrid every week. You know what I mean? It's just, we should, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's a stupid. reason because we've had years of, years of, you know, lack of investment, mismanagement and disorganisation, but we still expect to see Galactico football and the, everyone spraying the ball around and all them winning by four goals. Like, oh, put it back when <laughs> we're on plastic, put it back when we're on plastic and put I mean, Andy Ritchie up front. We're all gonna, Get a grip of yourself. We're, we all moan and we all, as we all go, oh, we groan and, you know, misplaced passes and, oh, no. and I think that's fine. Like, that's normal. Like, and, and getting frustrated is normal uh, because it's, 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 it's hard work sometimes, but, Giving players on your from your own team abuse and verbal like that, I just don't get it at all. And I tell you what, if if they, if they wouldn't do it if they was if, if there wasn't the boardings in place and they weren't face to face with oh, them, no, no. As, they get, <laughs> as they get leathered, if they did it in the car park out the back after the game, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. They wouldn't do it because they know <laughs> feel that there's no consequences to doing it. But well, I feel like there should be some consequences, to be honest. Well, the thing is, it, it, we should should give the stewards a yellow and a red card each. Hear him mm. once, yellow card. Hear him twice, get out. That'd be That's fun, to, think. That'd be oh, fun yeah. to watch, wouldn't it? Oh, See yeah. how that went give, me, give me the <laughs> yellow cards. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you know, it's, it's, we've all, we, all have, we all have our little moments and we all have our frustrations and stuff like that. But, I mean, you know, if me and him, like, start, go, oh, we're at the back of the Rochester Road and the players aren't going to wear it. And you're saying it sort of amongst yourself. But like you said, if they're down the front 
and they're leaning over yes. and, they're, and, they're, and they know that the players can hear it. I think it's a different story altogether. Well, the, these five guys I was sat next to, they were actually in my seats when I turned up there, but at the end, the end they, they are season ticket holders. But they're not actually sat in their season ticket, but that's the place they sit together, the five of them, every week. And all they did, there was at least, there was one in particular, but there was at least two of them were giving it the old mouth all the time. And it, it was embarrassing. And it, we don't need them. Basically, we're supposed to be a family club. I, would, I wouldn't let my family hear that. Yeah. Uh, if any of those people are watching, oh, please, you want to give us a name? Please Alan, give please. us a call. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. There might be a photograph because they did the the, you know, the guy walking around took the photographs and we all stood up, um, right. giving a standing ovation to Frank and the, there was a five at the side of it. So yeah, but you know, it's, if anyone it's, 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 if anyone watching does, it's the same. It's the same on. Sorry, no, I'm just saying. If it's anyone the same on Facebook, isn't it? Oh yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People give it out all the time, yeah. But I'd like look. I mean, if you if you feel that that kind of stuff is appropriate and you think it helps to motivate players or whatever, give us a shout, call in, and and let's have a chat about it. But I think the majority of us would would feel that it's 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 not helpful. Um, well, put it put it under the shoe. If any of these guys that are giving it all the mouth, I've got kids and their kids are playing football, and somebody give it to their kids in the same way that they give it to. Our, I know they're grown up men, but nobody should have to put up with that. In, in no day or age. The grown-up you know, number is the brain of children. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, People, they're not even that. They're not we've even had that. it though. They can tell enough. When, when Unsworth was 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 in charge and, and, you know, a lot of the fans really hated him, like, you know, I, in, a, in a way that I didn't quite understand because, you know, he's, it's not like he's a war criminal or anything, but, like, if people say he was a football criminal and I can, you know, whatever, but like, you know, and, and we had, this is what we had at the time because some of the language and some of the abuse and some of the anger and vitriol that was going out there was, I felt was going too far and was counterproductive towards the, the success of the club and, and all that. And that's yeah. when, that's when I started getting a bit of grief then for, 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 for sort of targeting those. Cause what happens if you target those people who behave like that, they generally can't take it. They can't take the abuse themselves. And it's like, it's all right for them to dish it out, but often they can't yeah. take it back themselves. And, and I don't think that, there's, there's always people who say, I pay my money, I can say what I want in a football ground. Well, that's not the case. It's not, you you, you know, if you said that anywhere else in yeah. in, in life, you, you, well, someone's going to stop you. You're going to get, you know, in trouble, arrested, kicked out, whatever. And I just don't think, like you said, they're at work doing the job and they shouldn't be abused in that way. Yeah. No, they shouldn't. It, 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 it's, it's, it's total diatribe. Total diatribe what they're doing and it is, it is wrong. Out and out wrong. And we should get rid of them, basically. That's, that's just my point of view, maybe not everybody's point of view because a lot of people think it's the right thing to do but I just don't well I'm you, going to you, do you can't hear what you're saying sorry well no I just think I'm just going to do this for that call there you go <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I think it's, I think it's something that I look, people are intimidated by people when they're, you know, being aggressive and yeah. being that, that kind of way. So I, I understand why people don't sort of say anything or, but look, it's something that I think we need to get out of our system at Boundary Park. Our players, they might not always be, you know, the best or, you know, but, there, players, ever, but there are there players, are players and, yeah. and, and, and they will respond better to encouragement than they will to aggression. Yeah, of course they will. <laughs> Everybody does. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you, yeah. you can only whip somebody so long before they actually go down, can't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. You took a lot of whipping yeah. before you go down, don't you, Dave? Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. I like oh, yeah. that one right on me, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah, out of there. I'm getting out you know, people, t they, they learn it from their parents, they learn it from people above, and they think it's okay. And, you know, it's it's not. So let's try and get rid Let's try and get rid of it at Boundary Park on starting yeah. on Saturday again, South End. Look, if one of their players is going to, to take a corner, you know, take the mickey out of him by all... Yeah, by well, all yeah, you can do. It's, 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 but again, keep it within a certain, you know, like certain decency, yeah. I think. Do it with a bit of class. Say something that's, you know, witty. <laughs> well, be witty, not shitty. Yeah. Right, okay. Yay! Yeah, yeah. So. Get a banner made. Sorry yeah. about that. I'm just going to do this for you. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, yeah. Sorry. All right, lads. I'm getting off. Let somebody else talk now. Yeah. All right. Good piece. call, Alan. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Right. Mate. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Bye. Let's um. Hang on a minute. Let's. Uh, we've got uh. Which one? Yeah, this one. <laughs> 
That's the Ibi intro. Hello, <laughs> Ibi. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, guys. You all right? Yeah, we are, mate. You. I'm all right, sexy Dave. I'm all, what a good win last night. I thought Joe Gardner was outstanding and humming. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they've they've brought something new to the team over the last few weeks, I think, apart from at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but like, yeah, we've seen um yeah, I look and the thing is is that they, these are Mickey Mellon signings, aren't they? So I think, you know, what you have to remember with these signings is they're not all there to replace the the previous players. Some they're there to enhance the squad, enhance the team and, and bring something more to it and make it better. And I think that the, those two players coming in have shown that they can improve the the players around them and make them better. And that's what it's all about. So I've, I've been impressed with them. Yeah, I was disappointed on Saturday what happened. But we need to change our home form because we need to work something on that because we need to start winning games regularly because we need to cement our position in the playoffs yeah we do it's still it's still pretty tight in there isn't it you know you've got Halifax creeping up behind you've got older shot yeah it's um it's it's just it's just very very close very very tight 11 games to go and we've got a tough month ahead haven't we we've got some really Ab- tough games. absolutely guys uh, the next few games are very difficult I'm looking forward to them I can't like I, I can't go to a, uh, any of the far away games in March, but um, I'm looking forward to, to the home. We're looking forward to Chesterfield and we've got Rochdale coming up. Halifax. Files, Halifax. We've, yeah, we've got some good games. And, you know, uh, we, yeah. and we're in the Saturday middle. will be a difficult game, uh, Matt. Well, we've got, we've got, we we own one, don't we? We own. They, they beat us four 0 on the opening game of the season. We've we we owe them that. Like we've got to. Um, we, you know, I don't have, have any teams done the double over us this season so far. Um, not sure if they have off the top of my head, but, uh, but we don't want South End to do the double on us. Um, Bromley could, couldn't they? But they yeah. Still, not. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, these that's the thing, these two teams have already beaten us at their place. Um, <laughs> actually, it was the first game of the season under Unsworth this season. We got 4 0, and it was Unsworth last game, wasn't it? The 3 0 at Bromley. So, <laughs> we'll, so, but I think things like that are a good indication of seeing how far we've come when we've played the same teams. You know, we've conceded seven goals against these two teams uh, earlier on in the season. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see um, how far Mickey Mellon has brought us when when we're up against these sides. Do you do you do you are you confident that we'll pick up you know maybe four points over the next two uh, two home games? Do you think we can get two wins, or do you think we're going to really struggle a bit? No, no, I think uh, things are looking positive. Uh, believe me, we can beat anybody in the league if we can sort ourselves out. And I'm really looking forward to Saturday and hopefully things pick up. But we need the fans to stop abusing the players because last Saturday was appalling. The language that was people coming out with was unbelievable and it doesn't really help the players, really. No, it doesn't help anybody. It, it really doesn't. And I think... There's a lot. There are. St- there's a like you when you spoke to Joe Royal Dev at the weekend. Like you didn't. You know, it was only a minute or so. But he said about like you asked him if Latics were a sleeping giant and if we were gonna. You know, we were on our way back up. And he was saying how you know he, we're getting there slowly and there's lots of work to do. There's lots and lots of work to do. Mm. And you'll never, you'll never change everything instantly. But I think winning breeds positivity and and getting better players. But look, I mean, you can see it at the top level. You see it at the top top level in the Premier League where. Fans are abusing their own players, and they've got like international players and brilliant players, and they have an off day, and they and they get on their back. So I, I think I've always said this: it's not really, it's not really about that. It's more people taking their own anger and aggression and mis, you know, the using the football as an outlet to 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 channel their their aggression. It's not really about the players. It's not really about that. They, they're just using it as an excuse to to let you know to make themselves feel better and offload some anger on on somebody that doesn't really deserve it. And and that's what annoys me about it because the players don't deserve it. They don't deserve that level of abuse at any club from anyone. How do you think we'll get out against Southend? Maybe. Uh, I think we could. Uh, we'll we'll beat them two one. It'll be a very close game. But I like the Southend manager. He's a decent. Fella, ex Oldham player. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Mayer. Yeah, so, but yeah, I, I, I like him, but I don't want him to win. He's already had, the, he's already had the four 0 victory yeah. on his score. 
Hopefully, we can just get on a bit of a run ready for Rom, uh, Bromley. Romley. Yeah, get on a run, <laughs> run for Romley. I think... How are you, Dave? By the way, are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm very well. Yeah you, yeah, you look very tired today. I'm knackered, and my wife just texted me saying the boiler's brought down, so I can't oh. wait to get home. So, yeah. You're very, uh, maybe you're very observant. Yeah, no, no, he's a very good fella, a good guy, and I've got respect for both of you guys for doing this. You're my sure. Man, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look <laughs> after your guy, uh, self, guys, and I'll let another caller come in. We will, a bit. Thanks very much. Cheers, you look mate. After your Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just gone. <laughs> We've got some new buttons, as you can tell. Um, new bit of kit. Buttons. So, uh, some buttons, yeah. Um, yeah, speaking in radio voice there, Dave. Uh, don't forget, guys. Attention, Attention all, all listeners. From Shaw to Shulver. Crompton to Coldhurst. Fitton Hill to Failsworth. Hollywood to Haddershaw. From Lees to Limeside. This Saturday, 24th of Feb from 10 till 11 a.m. Myself, Matt Dean. And me, Sexy Dave Bradley. Are exclusively live on Oldham Community Radio. Bringing you a roundup of everything Oldham Athletic. On a look at Laddix. So join Matt and Dave on 99.7 FM DAB Oldham Community Radio. We had a right laugh doing that on Saturday, didn't we? Oh, not half, mate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really no, it was good. good. Um, yeah. We got to play some music. We played Enya. Uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. And, and Eddie Floyd. Eddie Floyd, knock on wood. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, uh, thanks for all the texts uh, from the listeners. And if you want to get involved on in our next live show, which will be not next week, the week after, will it not? not field no, it'll be not, yeah, 16th of March. Uh, just hashtag look at Latics yeah, uh, on yeah. Twitter. Um, on the old Twitter there, mate. Or drop us a message um, via another means. Yeah, pigeon. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know SOS what, Dave? Yeah. We've exhausted the uh, the callers. And so, the content, yeah. Yeah, so if you want to buy us a coffee, Ooh. want to buy us a coffee. So now, Dave, fans can buy us a coffee. How do you like your coffee? Mm, like an ice cream, white, frothy laddie. Laddie. Mm. Mm. So if you want to buy Dave a... Laddie. Then uh, you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash OFC podcast. I'll just take mine black. Graham. Graham. Hi, guys. Just sneaking in there. Your beard's come on leaps and bounds, hasn't it? Yeah. Growing it back again. Yeah. Funny. I can't imagine why you'd want to shave it off in winter up there, mate. I <laughs> know. Uh, uh, so, tickets booked. The, the game ticket booked as well. So, me and my mate Gary are down on Saturday. Nice one. <coughs> Good stuff. Well, we need to put a win in for you guys then, don't we? Coming down from uh, from up there. The only thing is, I want we could only we got tickets in Jimmy Frizzle. What's that? Sorry? We got tickets for the Jimmy Frizzle stand. Oh yeah, 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 the yeah. best stand, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Like the last time the Matt and Dave stand. See, where are the cool lads hanging up? Sorry, what's that talking over you? What are you say, mate? No, the last time we were down, we were all the we were near the guys with all the flags. Oh yeah, 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 down near the Atletico's, yeah. I just take yeah. up for the whole game. It's the place to be, mate. Standing up there, you know, singing. Uh-huh. See, yeah, yeah. what you have to be careful because shoes tend to go flying around and things like that. I mean, it's a bit random. Um, uh, I'm at the right at the very back, so if you, I'll be mourning at the back. So if you just see me up there, but I won't be mourning at the players, I'll be mourning about things, <coughs> general things. But if we're winning, I'll s- still be mourning with your brother, won't I? <laughs> oh, you, I mean, you, I mean, have you ever heard anyone go on like my brother? No. I mean, it's... Oh, actually, yeah, my wife. <laughs> Honestly, Graham, it's like, it's just soul-crushing. Thank God, me, me, I just, like... <laughs> it's like, go to an away game with him, and then you get in the car, it's like, uh, come on, man, there's got to be something positive you can take away. <laughs> yeah. The thing, I can say what I want about him, because he, he, he wouldn't watch anything that I do anyway. But, so, uh, but yeah, he's all right, grump. Um, but, yeah... Um, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> hopefully for him, you know, uh, for my brother, a, a nice we performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has high expectations, let's just put it that way. How do you think we'll get on against Southend, mate? 
Are we not due to give them a 4 0 drubbing? 4 0? I think so. I think we need to pay them back for the 4 0 <coughs> hiding that they gave us. I hope you're right. Make them score two of the goals or so. <laughs> I don't care who scores them. I don't care who scores them as long as we win. We've got to get, we've got to turn it. I just, like I said before, I'm more confident in <coughs> Southend and Bromley that we'll pick up points than against the lower lower ranking teams. I think we're more likely to pick up, like I say, yeah, Chesterfield. We'll win against Chesterfield, but then we'll go out against Dorkin and probably lose 1 0. That's the kind of that's the kind of mandala we're in right now. I hope that, I mean, yeah, beating Chesterfield. Oh, God, that's going to be stopping them going up. Yeah, yeah that, that's that. there should be a good atmosphere at that game. I've been off for the last couple of weeks of work, about the last five or six weeks. I haven't feeling great, but um, I've been watching Oldham games Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. Um, and I don't understand why we don't play green. Some games we bring him on as a sub. Yeah, I've said that, yeah. but he started last last night and he started oh, he was brilliant uh, last against Merdin Ed. He's, we win when he starts, so it, it just begs his belief. Twenty minutes. I mean, like you were saying on the pod the other day. Mm. Just, I mean, and I'd, Hammond. Have, I'd have brought my, my what I was saying yesterday during the game was was it coming towards the end? Of, he was making substitutions. I would have brought Green off me and uh, and and brought Gardner Walker, Walker. Gardner or, or Walker out on the left and just and left the centre yeah. midfield as it was. <laughs> but, uh, look, we can't complain if we win. It's you know it's like on Saturday, like when we were talking about what to ask Mickey Mellon when when we when we're going for the post match interview and stuff. Like it, it, if they get a couple of goals or goals, it changes, doesn't it? Because at the end of the day, if you win the game, you've won the game, and that's all that matters ultimately. So it's the same with Southend and Bromley. I don't care how we win it by hook or by crook, but as long as we win the games. Um, but, but we've got to win it by try, trying to play football and not just revert into this ridiculous long ball, long ball giving it away. It was um, Dom on the podcast who said uh, at the weekend about the, you know how it's just so random. You know, there's it, mm. so many variables can go wrong when you just hunt for that. There's a lack of control, and he was bang on. It was a great point, like that. That's why the game has changed and evolved away from that. You know. Yeah, I was watching the game the other night where, um, when we hoofed the ball up to Hogan a lot and I was I, I had to go on Football Manager a couple of minutes later to figure out if Hogan actually played the positions or he was just a defender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was baffling, wasn't it? It was I just baffling. It was different positions. Like, um, I'm like, he's, not def- he's a defender. Why is he up in the corner there? I said, if you need to play somebody up there, why not push one of the mid shoulders out there? Yeah, it was like we said, it's just a... Desperation, yeah, desperation some desperate measures lack of, uh, and lack of ideas. So when are you coming down, Graham? Are you coming down on Saturday or on Friday or what? Uh, my mate's working Friday, so we've got train tickets from Glasgow at nine in the morning. We'll get into Mills Hill for about half one. Yeah. And then we'll get the bus from Mills Hill through into the town by the bus station down towards the hospital. Yeah. And just Oh, and then sadly, we're not hanging about too much after that. We've got the train back from Mills Hill at half six back into Glasgow. So, proper away day for you then. That's it. Straight round to Brilliant. Glasgow. Yeah, that'd be good. Nice one. Well, listen, if we don't uh, get to say hello to you on Saturday, have a great day. Have did a... you did you list catches on the um, DAB up in Scotland for the Oldham Community Radio? Or have you got an Alexa? Because if you say old, uh, play Oldham Community Radio, we are on from. Saturdays, ten till eleven. So you can also yeah. catch up on mix on Mixcloud. By the way, you can, if you go on Mixcloud, we're on. Uh, I'll have a look. Ooh. Last week I tried. To my son. Version. Say again. I tried to tune in last week, but my son, who was autistic, wanted to do something, so I didn't get a chance. Oh but well. Yes, we well, we yeah, you can all get it on catch up, mate. So yeah, as I say, it's. Um... I did have one yeah. question before I went. Yeah, go on, mate. Alex Reid, right? Is he going to be punished forever? Are we going to cut him, save wages, or is he coming back into his fold? I mean, because if he's not going to play and we're paying him, we may as well just get rid of him. Yeah, it's 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 the club decision, isn't it? You know, it's you know, if you pay him up, he's going to cost you money. If you you know, he's he might come in, he might come in useful. You know, I think it might be a bit easy to get rid of him. So, isn't he under contract for next season as well? No, it's no. two years. Is it just it? this season? Two, two and a half years, was it? I don't so know. He's got, he's got, I don't know. <laughs> So. I mean, if he's gonna sit, if he's gonna sit in the stand for like X amount of weeks, I mean, we're not playing him. We're mm-hmm. still paying. Him. It seems to me like Mickey Mellon's made his mind up though, and that'll be that. So, uh, Callum Willoughby, uh, Carl Willoughby scored two last night for error, didn't he? Last night scored two. Yeah. Don't. So, well, I want, well done. I want to that. 
Maybe, well, we'll see. Maybe he'll come back and play a part, but... I yeah, he's got, he's got a long contract again. Another yeah. read. Oh, no. It's so good for him last night. It was really good. Um, one of my friends, like, uh, he sports like... Um, uh, he sports like one of the teams like Falkirk every, and he always watches the league above because they're about to get promoted because they're like 17 ahead. Right. Okay. And he watched because he's old as well, Gary. And he was saying that Willoughby's not ready for our first team yet, but he, he looks like he's killing it up in there. Right. Well, well that's good. That's good. That's yeah, good. We'll we'll just give it confidence. a chance. Give it yeah. a chance. Yeah. Right. Thanks for calling, Graham. Cheers, yeah. mate. Take care, pal. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. And that. <laughs> it's the end of the show. Oh, I just wanted to. Uh, where's yeah, what uh, after? Left that comment. From Which one, Keith? Keith Gledhill. Yeah, about, about Chesterfield. Oh, uh, no, about uh, right. Yeah, he wants us to uh, on in the illiterate alliterative intro to a look at Latics. Please, could you introduce from round from round four to Royden? Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> it's a good one though to be fair where is Ramthorne? it's up near Clarksfield is it? yeah mm. from Clarksfield to Glodwick oh, I don't know Clarksfield to oh, what else can you see? Chadderton oh yeah because that rolls off the top of it we see don't they <laughs> oh yeah Dave by the way it's Kirk Willoughby whatever so I've, I've had a long day and I'm going home to a cold house, so I do not <laughs> give a sh- oh from Coppies. I should know that from Coppies to Clarksfield. <laughs> from Clark- Coppies to Clarksfield. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's not do that. Cleared and drive any more of the listeners away. <laughs> with our absolute nonsense. Uh, uh, absolute free nonsense. Yeah. So Saturday, South End podcast. Mm. Sunday, listen to it. Monday, Tuesday, Bromley at home. Football phone in Wednesday. Make love on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. What do you do Friday? Mm, with a curry. Oh, yeah. No. All right. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah, so that's that's the thing. And if you are, we have got a show recorded for Odin Community Radio. Not half, mate. For Saturday morning, which is 10 to 11, if you want to listen to that. It's more of the usual nonsense. Yeah. Um, but thanks for tuning in and, uh, you know. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Boundary Park Alert System, a QPod production hosted and produced weekly by Matt Dean, Andy Halliwell and Dave Bradley. QPod is Oldham's only dedicated podcast production company and if you'd like to learn more about how podcasting can help take your brand to the next level, visit kupod.co.uk. A huge thank you goes to all those people who subscribe to the podcast on Spotify. We really appreciate you all. Please visit oafcpodcast.co.uk and click be a supporter or find the link in the show notes if you'd like to help help us fund the show it's only 2 99 per month to subscribe but if you'd rather make a one-off donation please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash oafc podcast or click the link on our website don't miss the latix football phone in every wednesday live from 8 30 p.m please visit youtube.com forward slash at oafc podcast and do hit subscribe while you are there you can also follow and interact with us on facebook twitter instagram and tiktok at oafc podcast Big thanks go to Eileen Finnegan for writing our excellent weekly blog, which we encourage you to read on our website every Saturday morning, and also to Paul Prendergast for providing us with all the Latix Mind questions. The title music for the show is by Manchester DJ and producer Starion, and for more information, visit bandcamp.com forward slash red laser records. If you'd like to be a guest or contribute to the show, we would love to hear from you. Until then, see you next time.